ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानतिरंधस्ञानंजनशलाशय चक्रुमिलस्मीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपदा श्री गौर प्रियमूर्त श्रीमते भक्तिवल्लभतीर्थ गोस्वामीना श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं कदा ददाती स्वापरंकुत वंदे नंद व्रजस्त्रीन पदारेण संहरिकोतीसुनाशेतुवराशय वंशकूषा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायक कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य गौरशिषे नम हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते उपेश गोपी संता राधा सत नमोस्त सप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदवनी वृषभाते देवी स नमा हरी प्रिय वृंदय प्लस दिव्य प्रिय केशव विष्णु भक्ति प्रदे देवी सत्यवत नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर से वसति गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे First of all, I pay my unlimited and enormous sandhavatana to the Namaste to Guru Maharaj, the Bhakti Vallabh Tirtha. And I beg for the author's mercy that I will be able to serve the Vaishnavas according to the divine instruction. I also pay my very, very respectful obeisance to all. Beloved devotees here, this satsang, and I thank you for engaging me in this service. Hari Bol, Prabhu Ji, volume is very low. Can okay. everybody hear? I can't hear. Okay, I will try. I can't hear too, Didi. Louder. Uh, louder. Is it good now? Okay. Yes, Prabhu Ji, please. It's very, very slow. Okay. Very, I'm very. very um, I can't hear anything. It is oh. very low. Oh, okay. Still low now. No problem. It's okay now. Little bit better now. Little now bit better. better than before. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. Better than before. Okay. I'm very sorry, but we tried to get a new microphone, but there was complications with the cable. So I sent someone to Mathura to get a new cable, and that didn't work out. So yeah, we're trying to get things fixed soon. We're working on it, and for now we just have to. That's all right, Prabhuji. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we're. That's yeah, all right. Probably, we're, probably I'll just buy a new microphone with a camera. That that would be better. I think. So, okay, yeah. today we are very very fortunate that uh, we can remember the Guru Maharaj's glory. Yesterday was his holy Avir Bhakti. He celebrated his Yatha Puja here in Vrindavan. Very beautiful celebration. And we all came together to glorify him, remember his unlimited glory. And of course, within a short span of time, it's uh, impossible to do justice. Even here, we won't be able to do justice. But we will try to at least remember some of his glories. And since this is also part of our Rajakatamrita webinar, and uh, we are trying to relate things to the mood of worship in Vrindavan. 
So we are going to also apply the same vision that we have been practicing together while we glorify Shri Guru Maharaj. So to start off with, in relation to Vrindavan, who is Guru Maharaj? <laughs> we worship him as our most beloved Diksha Guru, Shiksha Guru, and as the Acharya of Sri Chaitanya Gaudiya Marga. And beyond that also, of course, he has his transcendental identity because since he has entered Mahasamadhi, we say Nitya Lila Pravishta. For most of us, it was a very difficult time to start using this term, of course, because we feel a lot of separation from Guru Maharaj. Um, Prabhu, voice is low. Uh, voice is low? Yeah. Okay, just one second. I have to adjust somebody. Okay, I'm trying to speak louder. Is it better now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now it is better. Okay. Okay, so in the transcendental Goloka, because we say Nitya Lila Pravishta, to all those acharyas who have entered the eternal pastime. So that means eternally they are entered into the transcendental pastimes of Goloka Vrindavan. And of course, there also Shila Guru Maharaj has his transcendental identity. And the more we enter into Vraja Bhakti, the more we focus our Smaranam, our remembrance on that transcendental identity of Guru Maharaj. And although Srila Guru Maharaj, he was very cautious to enter into these topics, and you can say reserved in the sense that he spoke on the deeper topics of Vrindavan pastimes on rare occasions, and he did um, instruct devotees privately particularly about Braja Bhakti. So, but he did speak on several occasions and I want to recall this today to glorify him because there are quite a few devotees out there who are not aware of this side of his because they hear about the more, um, you can say, rustic pastimes of of Vrindavan from various other Acharyas. They're surprised sometimes when they hear about uh, Guru Maharaj's relationship to Vrindavan. So first of all, we have to understand that Guru Maharaj is a Prajavasi, yeah? In his Swarup, but also in his Sadhana Rupa, because when he was here, his transcendental body is also a completely chinmoy, transcendental, and is also always related to Vrindavan. <clears throat> so we can see that especially when Guru Maharaj was in anguish and he was seeking the ultimate shelter, and that pastime was when his Gurudev, our Param Guru Maharaj, was in a very bad um, physical condition. He was manifesting illness pastimes, and where did um, Shla Guru Maharaj take shelter? You probably all remember that Guru Maharaj at once, um, he jumped on the train, and even without having ticket, he came to Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, he at once, he took a vehicle to Govardhan and he took shelter of Govardhan and he started doing Parikrama. And so here we see how deeply connected Guru Maharaj is to Vrindavan because when someone is in anguish, in, in deep uh, trouble, then usually that person takes shelter of what is really essential in his or her life. And also when we we're with Guru Maharaj here in Vrindavan, you could sense that he is at home here. He is now in his element in the dust of Braj. 
and he doesn't really want to go anywhere else. So I was very fortunate to be here in Govardhan with uh, Guru Maharaj during Kartik one, and we would go on Parikrama also. So this connection is very, very deep and very precious. And so when we are practicing Raja Bhakti, particularly we remember Guru Maharaj's relationship to Vrindavan and how we are connected to Vrindavan through Guru Maharaj. So on several occasions, of course, Guru Maharaj also spoke about these uh, deeper um, tattvas. I want to just start off a little bit um, more in general, how he would um, try to open up the doors to more intimacy because Vrindavan and Vraja Bhakti basically means increased intimacy in our bhaja. And so Shila Rupa Goswami says how we should engage in Sadhu Sangha. And of course, that is very particular for Braja Bhakti. So he says, Dadati Prati Grih Nati Guh Yam Apyati Prikshati Punkte Bhojayate Shaiva Shadvidhan Priti Lakshana. So the six loving ways of exchange between the devotees. They are that you should give something to the sadhus and take something in return. Serve them prasadam and accept prasadam for, from them. And then here is a very important one. You should open your heart confidentially to them. And you should hear from them about confidential matters. So this is not just the ordinary harikata, but this is very deep kata. And this is related to Vrindavan, because the most intimate connection that we can ever have is with Vrindavan. And so this is really the deepest, most intimate inquiry we can make from Guru Maharaj. And uh, although I'm completely unqualified, Guru Maharaj even manifested a pastime where he actually pulled it out from me that I approached him like this. So when I was not yet his sevak, that was before I became his sevak. So I was um, just staying in Kolkata in Sri Chaitanya Gaudiamat. And in the evenings I would have darshans like everyone else. I would line up and my heart would start beating a lot. I was very excited to have his darshan. And then every time I was in front of him, Although, of course, I, I had questions and I would, would have loved to spend more time with him. I was just in bliss. I was just happy and I couldn't really say much. And he would just ask uh, general questions. How are you? How is your health, etc. But after some time, he would keep on looking me deeper in the eyes every time. And he would say to me, looking me deep in the eyes, you can divulge. And I couldn't even understand the word at first because it's a, a, a word that's not so much used even in the English language. It means that you can open up your heart and talk about intimate things. So this is a very particular term that is, that is used only in the connection of um, intimate topics. So in other words, what Guru Maharaj was asking me to do is to open my heart completely to him and tell me what is really, really deeper, deeper in my heart. And he really wanted me to do that. And I also, of course, wanted to do that, but I felt so shy, you know, in the line of darshan with hundreds of devotees around you and you're being almost pushed from behind when you speak too much. So I, I just couldn't do it. And so when he kept on insisting on me to divulge um, to him, then I said, okay, I will, I will write a letter, I told myself. So I wrote a letter to Guru Maharaj and I packed it full with everything that I always wanted to ask him and, and tell him. And um, he was very happy. 
about the letter and he called me for a private darshan and he gave me answers and he told me about my heart's desire that yes this is very beautiful and it will take time for me to reach that but don't worry we are starting now and he gave me particular instructions how to start off he was so kind and he was so happy about me opening up my heart to him more so so this is very very particular about Raja Bhakti that we have very very intimate relationships with everybody especially with our Guru Varga with our Guru Dev Diksha Guru and Shiksha Gurus so this is a very wonderful teaching that uh, Guru Maharaj has given us and he also wanted us to have these um, intimate relationship with other devotees not just with him he always encouraged us to go and serve various Vaishnavas like yesterday Narottam Prabhu our god brother who was also the sevak of Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj for a long time so he was telling how Guru Maharaj would always encourage him in his seva to Srila Bharti Maharaj and even give him money sometimes and send him and to to convey his love and so he also told me the first thing actually Guru Maharaj told me just after he gave me the Diksha Malas in Mayapur that was in 2009 he told me now go and bow down to all the Vaishnavas so that was a very, very particular instruction he gave me and with that I understood in my heart also that this includes to serve them and to, to hear from them and inquire also confidentially. <clears throat> so Guru Maharaj always encouraged us to have these deep relationships with Vaishnavas because this is the breeding ground of Raja Bhakti. And so Shri Rupa Goswami also explains how we should serve Guru. He says, Vishram Bhena Guru Seva. So Vishram Bhena, how should we serve a Guru? Vishrambhena means very intimately. The mood should become very, very close. And how does that happen? Well, you become more friendly with Gurudev, closer, just like when you get to know someone. And the closer you get to know that person, the less you are afraid of that person in the sense that, you know, you, you have a distance between your you and that person and you're afraid that the relationship will suffer if you don't behave according to all the externalities of etiquette which actually sets the mood in, in Bhairi Bhakti to a great extent so that fear becomes much much less doesn't mean you're no more respectful but that fear driven aspect of devotion shrinks to an absolute minimum or disappears entirely and devotion that is driven by lobha or intense desire to serve krishna and his eternal associates and all devotees in the mood of braj particularly following the eternal brajavasis like gurudev Rupa goswami etc that fully manifests so this is what Guru Maharaj really wanted us, <clears throat> and he did indicate it and, and tell it even in class. Like I remember one time, Guru Maharaj was speaking in Kolkata Math, and I think it was Shlarupa Goswami's Agrabhaftiti or Tirabhaftiti. Somehow or other, at least he was speaking about Shlarupa Goswami, and then he explained how Srila Narottam Das Thakur, he says that Rupa Goswami is my everything. Yeah, in his kirtan, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada. They are my absolute wealth, my only shelter, my everything. Yeah, so then Guru Maharaj said, well, how is it possible? Because usually we only say that about our Guru. Yeah, usually we say, my Guru Maharaj's lotus feet, they are the greatest treasure. But here Narottam, he says, 
Shri Rupa Manjari Pada, the lotus feet of Shri Rupa Manjari are my greatest wealth, my greatest treasure. So then Guru Maharaj, he paused and he looked across the devotees. And then he said, we should think about this. We should think about this. So that hit me like a thunderbolt because it's, uh, of course, very clearly indicated here that Narottam Das Thakur, he is worshipping Sri Rupa Manjari as his very guru, yeah? as his eternal guru. Because in the traditional Gaudi of Rajabhakti, what we are actually taught to do is that we accept Sri Rupa Manjari as our eternal guru. Yeah? And either we serve directly under Sri Rupa Manjari or we serve under Manjaris who are serving her. Yeah? And Sri Rupa Manjari is, of course, uh, Srila Rupa Goswami in Gaur Lila. So when we do our pranams, then you will hear also many, many devotees pay pranams to Sri Rupa uh, Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami. You know, Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam And Guru Maharaj used to always do pranams to Shri Rupa Goswami also. And Vande Nanda Vrajastri Nam, also that mantra is addressing all the eternal Brajavasis, especially the women of Braj, because we meditate on ultimately serving the gopis and the manjaris in Vrindavan. And Guru Maharaj is also a manjari in Vrindavan that he has also <clears throat> indicated in certain pastimes of um, relating to his service to Radharani in particular. So this is very particular um, Guru Maharaj's mood in, in Braja Bhakti that we have to be aware of when we more and more focus on what's essential in, in our lineage. And so this is very wonderful that uh, Guru Maharaj has given us all these treasures of how we can um, go deeper in, in Braja Bhakti. And uh, some may, for example, say here, yeah, but how is it possible that, um, you know, uh, for example, if, if Narottam Das Thakur meditates on Rupa Goswami being um, his or her eternal guru, and if others also meditate like that, then how is it ultimately possible? Because we're taught that Janme Janme Prabhu say, yeah, that the lotus feet of my guru will life after life be the object of our worship. Now we have to understand something here. First, I will uh, tell you one pastime Guru Maharaj manifested to elucidate this. So it's more practical approach for you. Um, one time, one of our God sisters, she had a moment where her heart was overflowing <laughs> And uh, being Guru Maharaj Sevak, I was fortunate enough to be present when she requested Guru Maharaj with tears in her eyes. She said that, Guru Maharaj, I know I'm not qualified to reach perfection in, in this life. I will have to be born again. But I have only one request. Kindly, kindly come again. Come again to me in your form, in, in I want only you, I don't want anyone else in, in my next birth. And she was all in tears. It, it was such a beautiful moment of intimacy and love with, with Guru Maharaj. And I was actually moved to tears just witnessing this. It, it was, it, the chemistry was so amazing. And Guru Maharaj just looked at her with so much affection and, and that was it already. But then he added, and he said, he just said that Krishna will send someone. Yeah. Now, this may sound a little bit surprising, 
or you know like not um really satisfactory but it is a positive formulation of course of the eternal tattva that guru march wants to convey because tattva can be conveyed in in many many ways yeah so when we say janme janme prabhu say then we have to know how that applies so guru maharaj here he explained that krishna will send someone obviously if that someone was him that very same jiva he would say i will come again or krishna will send me again yeah but usually when a pure devotees re returns to krishna service radha krishna service they eternally enter the past times again that's why we say nitya lila pravishta yeah? and the next time we take birth usually an other jiva will become our guru and we continue from there that's the usual um thing that happens and um exceptionally that pure devotee this uh, uh, you know decides to come again or is sent to decide to, to descend again but because um that is a rare exception therefore generally we say nitalila pravishta now how can we understand that this does not um contradict the janme janme prabhu say um kirtan that we're we're singing well because it's the same guru shakti it is you know guru is ultimately the personification of nityananda prabhu of balaram of radharani of all guru tattvas yeah so they are always the same but they take on different form they descend through different jivas that they empower so shila gorgavinda maharaj he beautifully explained this <clears throat> by distinguishing between vyashti guru and samashti guru yeah so vyashti guru they are the individual gurus the jivas who are here in this world who we can connect to in a very physical world they are actually visible to us to our naked eyes and whereas the samashti guru he is one yeah and so he is nityanand prabhu he is balaram he is radharani according to our disposition or mood but vyashti gurus are many so that's why janme janme prabhu says right the same samashti guru will come again in a different form and more important than attachment to that one particular jiva whether it is your diksha guru or shiksha guru is our attachment to vrindavan in a very particular mood and this is what guru maharaj really comes to give us this mood of raj yeah so when we have fully imbibed that or to whichever particular amount we can imbibe then then he is happy and he gives us more blessings and our future guru whoever that may be will make sure that we can continue from there uh, just like krishna says in the gita on this path there is no loss so there's no question of going back and we have to have full faith in that and it will definitely continue we will definitely um uh, move on forward in in our vraja bhakti no matter who will be our future guru if we are taking birth again and again <clears throat> so this is how we have to understand how janme janme prabhu say practically applies although of course in the introductory classes we will not hear these topics but since we are talking about raja bhakti here it's important to to mention the uh, different understanding of how they relate to vrindavan and raja bhakti so then i wanted to talk about two more pastimes that the guru maharaj manifested that give you some example of how you know guru can um become closer and more and more intimate with his disciples even though externally you may feel that it's not possible or or it's very very difficult to actually do that for you or for anyone 
Now, these are examples. These are two examples of, you know, fast times Guru Maharaj manifest that in the physical proximity of these students. But even if you don't have physical proximity, these fast times can happen. Even he can come in dreams, etc. Because he's unlimited, Guru Guru Shakti is unlimited, and can come in, in any way. So there's there's no dearth for anyone out there. Guru Maharaj used to always say that. Guru can come anytime, anywhere. All the Shadi Goswamis, they can appear any time of year. And they did. You know, they, they, did, they did appear to many devotees. So um, I would like to recall a pastime that I heard from Bindu Madhav Prabhu, who is a dear disciple of Shila Bhakti Ranta Swami Prabhupada. And he was also very close to Shila Sridhar Maharaj. Bhakti Puri Goswami Maharaj and Guru Maharaj, of course. He used to drive Guru Maharaj across Europe in his car. He used to be in all his programs, organize his program. He was very, very close to Guru Maharaj. And Guru Maharaj used to treat him like a god brother because spiritually speaking, in terms of etiquette, they were like cousins, spiritual cousins. And um, so he was very fortunate to have such an, a close relationship to Guru Maharaj naturally. On top of that, he was very, very naturally inclined towards Raja Bhakti, more focusing on, on intimacy and deeper aspects of devotion than the Vaidhi Bhakti aspect of it. And I was very fortunate that I was um, able to talk to Bindu Madhav Prabhu for many, many hours, sometimes two hours a day over a good amount of time, and he would tell me wonderful pastimes. I'm very grateful to him. Uh, unfortunately, for those who don't know, he has left us a few years ago. But um, yes, very fortunate soul and grateful to him also. So one particular pastime that uh, I think very beautiful that depicts these very um, deeper, in, more intimate relationships is when he was driving Guru Maharaj across Europe and he always wanted to be with Guru Maharaj very privately and, you know, have him for himself. Like that's what everybody basically wants to some extent at least to spend quality time, extra time with, with your beloved Guru Maharaj, especially when, you know, your relationship becomes more intimate, you, you crave for that. And of course, on on tour, it's difficult, and if, because he's a big acharya, it's, it's always difficult to get that. So one time, um, when they, when they were on tour, they had two, three, maybe four cars maximum, and Guru Maharaj was driving with him in his car. So they stopped somewhere, and the other members got out from the car, and they were taking rest or doing whatever they were doing. And Bindumada Prabhu was just in the driver's seat next to Guru Maharaj and nobody else was in the car. And in front of them was a river and a bridge crossing over the river. So it was like a geographical boundary that marks like almost two countries dividing two countries, you know, usually river does that. So um, Bindu Madhav Prabhu looked at Guru Maharaj and was smiling very mischievously. He always has that mischievous smile when he's up to something. And Guru Maharaj immediately understood that he's up to some mischief. And Guru Maharaj just looked at him, waiting for him, what he was going to do next. And so he just put his, the, the gear into the first gear. And he released the clutch and put his foot on the gas. And the car slowly accelerated. And he looked at Guru Maharaj, and Guru Maharaj looked at him and smiled. And then he put in the second gear, and he started to grow, uh, you know, drive faster. And then the third gear, the fourth gear, and the fourth, and fifth gear. And finally, they were just cruising across the bridge, leaving everyone behind. And then Bindu Madhav Prabhu again looked over to Guru Maharaj, who was just smiling in bliss. And Bindu Madhav Prabhu told him, Guru Maharaj, I am a Abducting you, <laughs> and Guru Maharaj was like a child. He was he was smiling and he was in, in such bliss, and and they just had 
you know, such a good time. And so, of course, from the point of view of Vaidhi Bhakti, or, you know, the more majestic, regulated uh, Bhakti that we are taught to practice, this would be considered an offense and a breach of etiquette without asking your guru, you just, you know, abduct him and drive away from all the Vaishnavas without informing them, what would they be thinking? Suddenly you take off with the car and they're left behind, you know? <laughs> of course they returned and, and they, they got the rest of the group. But uh, from the point of view of Rajapakti, this, this is very much allowed. And not only allowed, this is very much wanted. And you cherish that. And if you have such moments of, of intimacy with, with your Guru Maharaj or Guru Vargas or devotees, you cherish them for the rest of your life. And so this is one of the treasures that Bindu Mala Prabhu shared with me. And I thought today would be nice to share it with all of you. And um, another incident where you could see a sudden jump of um, intimacy is one devotee who was standing with Guru Maharaj outside of a temple with other devotees somewhere in Punjab. And suddenly he noticed that Guru Maharaj was chewing on something. And he kept on staring at Guru Maharaj. And Guru Maharaj noticed that he was staring at him. And he, in his heart, this desire developed that he really wanted that Uchishta. He really wanted that remnant of Guru Maharaj. But of course, he was too shy to ask Guru Maharaj because others were standing there. And then there's this etiquette, you know, that he didn't want to breach. But Guru Maharaj, he knows, you know, he knows what his disciples want. And so he just took the tulsi leaf. It was a tulsi leaf. In, in his mouth that he was chewing on from the Charanamrita. And he just took it, popped it out from his mouth and gave it to him with his hands and he honored it. So this is a, another beautiful pastime where you see that um, the usual etiquette is no more important because you have this intense desire, lobha, that is the driving force in Raja Bhakti, in Raganuga Bhakti, that is able to overrule everything else. So this is a beautiful example I wanted to share with you. So these two examples, I was, um, you know, planning to share with all of you today, and. Uh, also what Guru Maharaj was saying about Rupa Manjari, how he was exemplifying um, this very, very deep connection to your eternal Guru, your Guru in Vrindavan. So now I'm very happy to be with all of you celebrating Shila Guru Maharaj's Divine Appearance Day, in particular in relationship to Vrindavan. And I want to give you also the chance to glorify Guru Maharaj if any one of you would like to contribute something, say something about his stories. It does not have to be particularly about Rajabhakti. It can be anything that you feel that you remember about or <clears throat> you want to share. And so I'm opening up the round now. If you have any questions also, you are most welcome to ask or you can also offer your Pushpanjali now. Jai Patita Pavan Shila Guru Maharaj Ki Jai Tarshut Avir Vastiti Maha Mahotta Ki Jai Pancha Kalpa Taru Yascha Kripa Sindhu Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Mira Didi Ji, Prabhuji. Yes, you can glorify your Param Guru, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, I was just waiting that if somebody else wants to say something, you know, most welcome. And then. No, you can say no problem. 
I, I, I have something after you, something to say. After. No, no, Didi, you please first say. No, please you, 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 I, I, a bit distant. Just, just you say, you have more contact with Barabatir Tamaraj. I just, just hear something I want to say later. Okay. Just give me two minutes and then. Namo Vishnu Padaya Shri Gaur Priya Murte Shri Mate Bhakti Vallabh Tirath Goswami Namine Om Hare Krishna everyone Actually I am not capable, not eligible and even very unqualified person to say about Srila Gurudev anything but I will take it as Gurudev mercy that I can say something I think I have repeated it so many times, but again, that's all I can say and that's all I will do. Uh, I have never seen Srila Gurudev in my life, but he has definitely seen me because he used to go to Himachal Pradesh. It's my husband's hometown. When I got married, so I went to somebody's house on dinner, but in the Gita Bhavan temple, Guru Maharaj used to come and there was a used to big program with Guru Maharaj and lots of Vaishnavas used to come over there. And uh, we were, because it's a, it's a hill area, it's Himachal, like a hill part. So the cars doesn't go in the small streets. So you have to go by walking. Uh, so we were going somewhere for dinner. I just got married that time, I think three, four months. And we were walking through the streets and there was a temple, Gita Bhavan. The name is Gita Bhavan, the temple name is. And there was a, so many, it's a big crowd, big mass over there. It's all the Mikeys and everyone, everything is over there. And uh, one of my sister-in-law said to me, a big saint has come here. Let's, let's go there and have his darshan. I said, I'm not interested to take anybody's darshan. You go and have it. Na. But and very fortunately, we couldn't cross to see because it's everywhere. The tents were there. They all covered the all the streets because there were so many people from all over the area from Punjab, Haryana and uh, Himachal Pradesh. So even if I didn't want to go there, I had to go there to, you know, to get to my destination. I had to cross that tent and I had to see all these Vaishnavas. So then she said, oh, he's a very big saint. There are like, a, uh, like your uh, Radha Madha Prabhu, your God brothers and God sisters, you know, the Radha Priya. Her family is from my husband's hometown. So they all were over there. They said, you know, the people who put the big tilaks and they do all the time, Japa, you know, those people, their guru is here. Na? So... I didn't see, but they said to me, just, you know, pay your obeisance. I didn't see anyone on the stage. There were so many people sitting over there, but I didn't see anyone. So I, I because I was not interested at all, even I did not know who are they and I didn't want to know even. So I just, you know, they said to me to fold your hands and I did it and I just walked away. So that was the first time when definitely Shila Gurudev, saw me i didn't see him but he saw me mm -hmm. and then it's finished and then i just was so busy in my materialistic life and uh, when i got to this gaudiya vaishnav sampradaya five years before i went to mayapur then shila gurudev was sick that time he was in kolkata mat so we were in mayapur and uh, i think it's nearly five or six years something and then somebody told us that uh, Bhakti Vallabh Tirath Maharaj is very sick. He's in. Uh, he's doing the uh, Aswastha Leela, like a illness. He's he's manifesting the pastime, uh, like he's ill, but he's not ill. He's actually absorbed absorbed in a, uh, uh, Krishna and uh, Radha Krishna Leela. He's actually in his eternal uh, abode. But he's just pretending that he's 
ill. So that's what all our Gurudevs does. We think that they have a materialistic body and they get sick, but actually they're not getting sick. They never get sick. They just, you know, they just absorb themselves in the eternal pastime of Sharada and Krishna. So I said to my husband, let's go and see this Gurudev. And my husband said, you don't know him. Who's he? I don't know him. And we just, you know, finish. And then we came back to Australia. And uh, and fortunately, I always connected to his disciples, Srila Gurudev disciples, like Radha Madhav Prabhu, Pralad Prabhu. Radha Madhav Prabhu introduced me to Pralad Prabhu, Radha Priya, even in Una. Like uh, so many Srila Gurudev disciples I got connected into. And one day I saw his picture. And as soon as I saw his picture, I fall in love with him. I thought like uh, it's something is something is connected to him. I I just couldn't stop. You know, it was a very very emotional and very very sentimental time for me. And I was like in a deep deep separation. That time, Shila Gurudev had entered into the. So, so I was like a really, you know, you muted Mira. Yes, sorry. So as soon as I saw Gurudev picture, I was just got so much connected to him, so much connected to him that. I couldn't stop thinking about him all the time, all the time about Srila Gurudev. And then I said, at that time, I got initiated by my Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Prasad Vishnu Maharaj, who's also a god brother of Srila Bhakti Vallabh Tirath Maharaj. And, but I was in so much deep love with Gurudev that I was just remembering him every moment. And I was just... I couldn't bear the separation from him. And I was thinking, oh my God, why didn't I go and took his darshan? Why didn't I go and took his darshan? So I don't know how come it's happened, but how come somebody can attach to someone whom he never saw and, but it happened to me and it happened in my life. So then I started like researching about him. I started reading the books. I read the book, uh, the D lust, disease of lust uh, about Gurudev. Then I read about Param Dev Gurudev, Param Gurudev book, uh, Pearls of Devotion. So, and uh, in this way, like I was very, very attached. So one day I was just, I saw my Gurudev and I just sat down and I started crying. I said to Gurudev that Gurudev, I have so much love for Shila Bhakti Vallabh Tirath Maharaj, I remember him all the time and it looks like that he's my Gurudev. And Gurudev said to me, he said, so what? He is your Gurudev. He is your, what is the difference? He's your Taya, he's Taya Gurudev, your older, Taya means uncle, the older uncle of your, your father. He said, sometimes it happens, the kids love their uncles more than their father. So don't worry about this, na? He's your, so I can't forget that day when Gurudev was so happy. He said, I'm so happy that you have so much affection for him and he, you are so much blessed. He blessed you, you know, that you got so much attachment for him. So, and that day, you know, I have, I, I had a dream that Srila Gurudev came and then in my street in Australia with his done so many sannyasis, thousands of sannyasis with the saffron clothes walking around. And then he just walked past my house and my Gurudev was there standing there. So then, you know, my heart just a little bit calmed down about all these things. And then, but still I have so much affection, so much dedication for Gurudev that I, as soon as I look at his pictures, I just can't stop myself. Then I read the book of Prahlad Prabhu. Now he's like a Parma Dwayat Maharaj. So Parma Anand, I, I'm not sure, maybe Radha Madhav Prabhu knows his name exactly. So I read his book, Sweet, Sweeter, Sweetest. I read first time and I cried for months. Then I read the next time again, I cried for months. Again, I read now, 
again and now i started making notes of that book every time i read that book i cry a lot and it just it's just so beautiful book i just i request everyone to read that book it's not only about shila bhakti vallabh tirath maharaj it's about a vaishnav a pure vaishnav na it's a very very nice book and uh, just i you know whenever i think about him whenever i just do the jadwani i listen to every time you know my, my heart is full of sins but every time when i listen to him or i read anything about him i feel very 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 happy and i feel like that yes i can do something i can do some bhajan i can do that till you know it's just a moment when i feel like this after that again i'm back to my material life but i do feel like this and i think he is such a param vaishnav he's a param hans so he it it looks like he has gone from here but he hasn't he hasn't gone he's still here in our heart everybody's heart is still here and i have personally experienced his appearance even i have never seen him but when i was remembering him so much in the separation i felt like that he's around here and he, he bestowed his mercy unconditionally on me literally unconditionally so that's all i want to say that any vaishnava whoever if you want to hold their feet tightly they will give you the mercy unconditionally it doesn't matter what kind of a person you are they will never see your faults they will give you the mercy unconditionally that's what he did with me and is that's all i can say shila bhakti vallabh tirath maharaj ki jay yeah. uh, thank you didi very beautiful also yeah. uh, i was actually hoping you will talk about this how guru maharaj appeared in your dream just to clarify that um our guru maharaj appeared in her dream and along with her guru maharaj also so this is an example of how guru can appear to anyone anytime even though he is already in a different past life and uh, i'm seeing also that our vidyapati prabhu has joined us fortunately so if he would like to say a few words he was also very close and dear to guru maharaj he would be very blessed Vijayapati Prabhu, can you hear me? You muted, Prabhu. You are mute, Prabhu. Okay. Um, maybe he is not. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Pranam. Hare Bol. So happy that you joined us. Yes. We we would love to hear from you about some some nectar with with Guru Maharaj, whatever you yeah. would like to share. Prabhu ji, I just want to say one more thing before we go. Yes. Vidya Puti Prabhu helped me a lot. That's that as I already said that I always connected most of the time connected with those people who have some kind of connection either their disciple or their shiksha guru or diksha guru. You know, I always connect to those people very well. So I never knew before that when I met first time Vidya Puti Prabhu, like I only knew that he is a disciple of Shila. bhakti vidanta swami maharaj and prabhu pad ji so i was very very attracted but i got really have a very big attraction towards him so whenever i have a program at my house i call him personally i won't call anybody but i will call him personally or message him and when he comes i feel very happy as soon as he entered in my house i feel like my house is like a vibrant now na it's everywhere positive vibes and if the environment is so you know good and i feel so happy and i i don't understand from which seat i have to offer him where he can sit na i feel very very happy as soon as and then eventually after one or two visits of uh, after one or two meetings i got to know that he had so much connection with shila gurudev he served gurudev so much he got so much love from gurudev and i said oh my gurudev you know you are so merciful so merciful you are making me connect to everyone who you know who had some connection with you so i can listen to your past time personally you know personal experience as you radha madhav prabhu you know i met you in vrindavan you know our meeting you didn't want to meet me first but 
you met me at gurudev's place you know so you know so i think that it's it's all planned it's if you have a desire if you have a honest and true desire then gurudev will plan something for you na so he will definitely so same as vidyapati prabhu he helped me a lot in my devotional devotion a lot a lot i'm still not doing anything but he really encourage me and motivate me inspires me a lot so i'm so thankful to you prabhu ji so thankful to you that you always help me hey krishna panch ka patal ru basha kripa sindhu ya e bacha patit naam aveni bio vaishna bio namo namaha this morning uh no not not this morning yesterday yesterday yes it was yesterday uh is uh, is is ram nilmavi and also the appearance day of of, of, of my shiksha guru bhakti balakti to paraj uh i was uh, yesterday i was uh, i actually joining a zoom meeting in india uh i think hosted by rasa bihari one of his uh, you know one of the very close seva uh i would say a traveling a companion uh, when he goes around the world he he, he goes out and rasa bihari is uh, is in himalaya you know it's mentioned i said himalaya or jamnu jamnu i think it is yeah and uh, he's a professor uh of uh, some kind of economic or philosophy or some kind and uh, at those days in the 1990s and 2000 um he uh, traveled with uh, gurudev always and he's basically a secretary to 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 gurudev so he he invited me for the zoom meeting and uh, what i'm going to say is what probably i'm going to say, uh, what i what, what, what i say yesterday uh in that meeting is probably all i could say uh, to you to share and guru maharaj sila guru maharaj we call him uh, we call him sila guru ma uh, guru dev you know so so we 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 mean that mean the same whenever he gives a lecture as you know those people who have actually attended his lecture uh either through video or actually personally uh uh Radha Madhav should know that he always quote this Guru uh, Guru uh, Astakum uh, verse: "Shakshakdarita, shakshakdarita tuena samasa sastre utasada bhava bhavata eva sabe kintu prabhu ya priya eva patasya vande guru si charanano vinda." In translation, uh, it says that the Guru. the spiritual master is to be honored as much as the supreme lord because he is the most confidential servitor of the lord this is acknowledged in all revealed scriptures and followed by all authorities therefore i offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of such a spiritual master who is the bona fide representative of sri hari krishna his dedication and love for his gurudev uh daiti malak maharaj is if you ever seen it and i'm sure radha malak was seen it he probably will have this described it uh is is really sublime you know really completely sublime and 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 he's so touched he's so in love in his uh, his guru dev that uh he practically cries he actually cries you know uh when when he thinks about guru dev so in the same way you know because today i'm giving this opportunity now to speak about bhakti balakti to maharaj uh i also have great uh, i wouldn't say a, a, a very much compared to him but i have i have some uh, connection with him and i do have affection to him 
I do love him actually. Sometimes, you know, people who are devotees who are in a different background, like myself, uh, especially foreign devotees. I don't know how many foreign devotees are, are here. I mean, when I mean foreign devotees means uh, not Indian, Indian, India, from India, or, uh, or devotees that are actually been brought down in the background by Western education you know, a Western world, you know, like, for example, I come from Malaysia, Singapore, we are British colony, you know, uh, so we are bombarded by all kinds of education in, in the uh, in the Western world. Uh, and one of the things that uh, they talk about is that one should be, um, what's the word for that? Uh, should be self-confidence. You must be self-confidence or even self-esteem. Maybe it's a better word, I, I don't know. But anyhow, in order to succeed in life, uh, you must be self-confident and you must be have self-esteem, you know? And that's the Western education, you know? Till today, anywhere you go, advertisement, anything, that's, uh, that they, 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 they are promoting through advertisement, through their education system that says that you must have self-confidence to succeed. You must have self-esteem to succeed. There is some truth in that, uh, which I can talk a bit later about, about this, but I, 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 I want to be sidetracked on that. But what I'm trying to say is this, that uh, Gurudev has so much confidence and so much relationship with his uh, Bhakti Daiti uh, Maharaj, that uh, he's so dependent on him and and he cries, he cries a lot uh, whenever he prays uh, in front of uh, his uh, Guruji, his Guru. So, in this particular verse uh, that I mentioned earlier, Shakshak the Rita Savastas Sashit. Pardon my, my, my translation, uh, my, my, my pronunciation, because I'm not good at it, because I just discovered that my teeth, you know, is, I have full of, I, I don't have, I don't have much teeth and somehow or other it, it, it affects my pronunciation, but it doesn't matter. Utastara Bhavyata Eva Sabi, Pintu Prabhu Ya Priva Eva Tasya, one day go to see Charana Vinda. What I want to say is this, that we should treat and actually feel, you know, treat is another thing. You talk about it is another thing, but actually feel that Guru Dev, your solo Guru Dev, uh, is actually same platform or even better platform than Sri Krishna himself. Your relationship with Guru Dev is so strong, so uh, meaningful, also connected that you want to be close to him. Uh, you depend on him. Just as we should be dependent on Krishna, uh, we also dependent on Gurudev. Now, uh, I, for people who are in Western educated as I am, uh, you know, we are talking exactly more or less the opposite. You know, I can do everything by myself. I'm, I'm confident by myself that I can do what I want. If I want to learn something, I can learn some myself. I can do something. Whatever I do, I can do. You know, I have the power to do it, uh, to change myself, you know, like that. But nothing is further than this, than this, this truth. The truth is that we are nothing. We cannot learn about Krishna without Gurudev. We cannot learn about Krishna without his mercy. That must sunk in into our head. And uh, it's not only sunk into our head, but also actually our action actually uh, radiates that way. 
or, or how, what's the word for it? Um, anyhow, it doesn't matter. You know, whatever, whatever action you're doing, whatever thing, thing, uh, things that you're doing, you are actually thinking Krishna or Gurudev, you are my uh, savior. Uh, I can't do without you. I simply cannot do without you. So that it must, the feeling must, must, must come. And so it is almost opposite of what we've been taught in the Western education. Just like, uh, and I'm just deviating a little bit, just like nowadays in the, in the Western culture, they say they, 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 have, they have songs and, 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 and they talk about what's wrong with not having fun, you know? I like to have fun. You know, especially those <laughs> teenagers, and <laughs> they are saying that ah, I just want to have fun, you know. Uh, but it's exactly, and and they they have said it so many times, like like a mantra, that it is part of their culture. You know, what is wrong to having some fun? You know, but it's exactly <laughs> opposite. You know, that's the mentality. Exactly opposite. If you want to uh, receive. Uh, the mercy of Krishna, uh, you want to be involved in this, uh, elevate yourself to the spiritual world, it's exactly opposite. You do not want to have fun for yourself, but you want to have, you want, you want to serve Krishna, you want to serve Guru. you want to serve, you know, that is the, um, the attitude, sentiment, if you like, uh, that we should reach. And if you have not reached it, <laughs> Bhakti Palati uh, Maharaj used to say very harsh word. He says that if you have, he, he did not say, I mean, I'm not saying the, uh, he will say that if you do not uh, see Krishna or, or follow Krishna, then your, 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 your spiritual life is zero, zero, zero. He repeated three times, zero, 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 you know. Uh, so we, as, uh, I'm, I'm sharing this because I know, uh, you know, uh, the, the audience is not that big. And I know a uh, few, uh, many devotees here in Australia and, and here that we must try to reach to the attitude that without the help, without the mercy, without the mercy of Guru Gurudev, Without the mercy of Krishna, everything is zero. And Bhakti Palavtita Maharaj repeated to Shan, zero, zero, zero. Uh, and it is, it is something that you, every one of us must try to just not listen to it, but actually not, not, not even hit, <laughs> but actually feel it, you know. That is why uh, when, a, when you read poems of Bhakti Vinat Thakur, Narutam Das uh, uh, even speeches from uh, what I've seen uh, about, about Tamaraj, they always feel so small. They always, the humble the humility is so great that you can't imagine a person <laughs> Western have, uh, education uh, people can actually uh, feel that way. So uh, I know I, what I say is probably is uh, very strong, but I have to say this. And why I'm saying this is because I have this incident that I actually met. Uh, I met. Balapitya Maharaj several times while in Singapore and, and, and Malaysia. And I returned, I, I think it was the first visit I, I, I decided that I had to go and see him in Calcutta. Uh, and it was uh, June 2006. Uh, I went there just simply to pay my obeisances. Um, I, <laughs> And uh, I also brought uh, a spectacle, you know, a spectacle like this. I was able to get uh, the prescription of the 
Gurudev uh, eyesight from Tamal at that time, Tamal, Tamal Krishna Prabhu. Uh, so my father, it so happened to be an optician, you know, people who sell spectacles <laughs> and uh, make spectacles, you know. So I told my father, please, you kindly uh, arrange that uh, to make this particular spectacle for my guru Dave, for this guru Dave. So he happily gave this, and then I went in to see him. First time I went in, so I, when I was there, uh, I gave that spectacle to him, and and immediately in 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 in, in his Vyasa son, he took off his old spectacle and take a new one and put it on. So I was so happy that uh, that uh, he done that. So. Uh, whatever little service I can do for him, I try. I cannot do everything, but I try. So on that particular visit, I confided with him and I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm here in Kakada to, to, to visit you, to listen to you. But also, I'm also very interested in going to Mayapur to uh, uh, pay my respect and obeisances to the Samadhi of Bhakti Kushum Shamaraj. Bhakti Kushum Shamaraj is the uh, acharya at that time of the main Lord Chaitanya Math uh, there. So I told him that I have a desire to do that. He had no problem with it. You know, he, he, you know the, <laughs> during my Isakon days, there's always that. Uh, thing that uh, they don't encourage you to meet, meet with anybody other than Isakot, you know. Uh, don't go anywhere, but go stick out to Isakot all the time. But Bhakti uh, Malafi Timaras was the other way around. He said, no, you go. You know, it's so much so that, in fact, he arranged, because in Mayapur, to, to, to go to Mayapur from Kolkata, as you all probably know, uh, takes probably about two hours, two, three hours to, to, to for, for, for taxi ride to go there, to, for car. So uh, at that time, he arranged himself personally. He arranged himself that I go there. And he arranged that I go there with one of his, one, one of his assistants, you know, to assist me. And it was, I'm not too sure whether it was his car or a private car or, or, or or he actually rented a, a range there. Anyhow, it was an ambassador car. In those days, there's hardly any cars other than ambassador, ambassador cars, you know. So uh, we went up there. Uh, I spent time in the Samadhi of uh, Bhakti Kusun from Maharaj. And then I visited all this, the Radhakun, Shamakun around there. Uh, and then came lunchtime. And they have already prepared some lunchtime, a lunch for me in Chaitanya Gaudiya Math in Mayapur, which is, you know, uh, maybe five minutes away from, 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 from car ride anyhow. So uh, the assistant, I, don't, I can't remember the name, a Bengali assistant came and asked me to please come and join him for lunch. I, I, I go back to the Math and have lunch. So I did, but you know, as usual, I'm a bit casual, you know, I, I just walk in, you know, and there I saw three senior devo uh, 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 devotees, very senior devotees in terms of age and in terms of experience in, 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 in Bhakti Yoga, uh, was sitting down there waiting for me. And I feel so embarrassed, you know, waiting, so you would not touch the food, before I actually sit down and ate, eat the food. And I was feel so embarrassed. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> uh, it goes to say, uh, uh, but I knew they were senior, uh, senior, senior disciple of uh, a senior devotees, I should say. And part of the plan was that I go for the day trip. And then at the end of the day, uh, the same car would drive us all back to Chetanama. So we did that. Uh, halfway through the journey, I was feeling sick, 
I was having a little fever. Um, they stopped over and asked me to go and buy some <laughs> panda dog. Uh, so I did. Uh, and I thought, you know, I had to do some service to this senior Vaishnav. So I, I, whatever I can, I do. So I, I bought a few mineral waters, you know, to drink. And I offered it to them and drink. And I did not know who uh, the devotees were. Years later, I found out that the devotees, that uh, one of the devotees, I have to say, one of the devotees was a sannyas. His name was Trivikram Maharaj. I, there's a Trivikram Maharaj. And he is actually a disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that until a few years, few years, few years later. Uh, and so, uh, with little, with a little, small, trivial, if you like, trivial association service seva to Guruji, to senior, uh, to 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 our Guru Vaga, um, is always useful. Oh, it will bring back. You know, uh, and I'm grateful that Bhakti Balafita Maharaj have uh, arranged us such a way that I'm able to meet such devotees. Um, and then there was also, uh, then it was a, there was an incident also that I think it was in that particular time also, uh, Guru Maharaj will uh, organize lectures of some kind of festivals and he, he would invite so many uh, senior disciples. Uh, in fact, uh, Santa Maharaj, probably uh, you all do not know, but Santa Maharaj is the youngest uh, disciple, uh, Sanya's disciple, initiated Sanya's disciple, the youngest Sanya's uh, senior disciple, uh, initiated disciple, Sanya's disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Aparam Guru. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He will, uh, when he comes over, because he was his old age, he was probably in his uh, uh, 80s or 90s already, very old. Whenever he comes over, uh, he, he will, you know, they, 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 they put him arrest, you know, arrest him to have a place to rest before he actually sit down and give a lecture. Uh, because he, comes in a little bit earlier, perhaps we have lunch, I don't know, anyhow. But guess what? <laughs> Bhakti Balavtita Maharaj arranges in such a way that Santa Maharaj came to my room to rest. Santa Maharaj actually came to my room, uh, to the room that I, not my room, I should say, the, the room that I, I, I when I stay in Kalkarama. Uh, so in that way also, I have some uh, association with Santa Maharaj. And later on, I actually visited him, Santa Maharaj. That's another story by itself. You know, that I have I have some uh, relationship with Santa Maharaj. So that goes on. And then on the 27th of June, 2006, and I remember the date exactly because uh, when I went to uh, see Guru Dev called me in his room this usual room in Calcutta and, and, and other mother will know about it. Uh, he called me in and uh, he says that, uh, uh, he, as usual, he give me a small talk, you know, how was the journey, so on, et cetera. And then he says that I got this book that I want to give it to you. And the book is Lord Chaitanya, Life and His Life and Associate. If you all have not got this book, you should try to get that book. It's a big book, very, uh, very big book. Uh, he gave it to me and he says that this is my, he, he wanted to give it to me. So I said, thank you very much, Guru Dev, that you have given me that book. I shall read the book. But then he's with a little smile. Uh, he says to me that, but this book is very expensive very expensive book to publish because if you look at the book, the quality of the book is very good. It's like a hard bound book, you know, it's a thick, I, I don't have it in me right now, but it's, it's hard bound book. Uh, 
And he says that, you know, uh, uh, I request a donation. He say he wants a donation from me. I say, okay, I'll give a donation, you know. So I don't know how much I give, but it was a small donation, but enough to, I think enough to cover the book cost. But then he came to me, he, he said to me in a almost laughing and joking manner, said, but that's not enough, you know? The donation is not enough. Then he said, he said uh, I actually want one lakh, one lakh of, and I say, to myself, I, well, I to him that actually I don't have one rupee. <laughs> I, you know, I don't carry so much money in this. And he was smiling. He said, "No, no, no, don't, don't misunderstand me." He said, "I want you to do one leg of jump. Chant the name one leg." Uh, and I say, "Well." To myself, I did, you know, even in my, my mind, I was saying that, no, no, I'm, I'm from the Isakon era, you know? And Isakon, uh, there is always an emphasis of 16 rounds, you know? You do 16 rounds, you're done, you're good, good enough. You know, you can do more, well, we're fine, but 16 rounds is just great, you know? And those days I was struggling even to chant 16 rounds in, in my days in, in, in Isakon. I tried to, but, Bhakti Balakta Maharaj informed me that no, do one leg. So I took it as an instruction. And I know that if I were to do one leg every day, I will satisfy him. He will be happy. He will be happy. So I say, I, tr I try anyhow. But somehow or other, through his mercy, because no, I, I can't think myself able to do it. Through his mercy, the very next day, I was able to do one leg. And from that day onward, without stop till now, till today, so it's about 15 years now, I haven't stopped chanting one leg. Uh, and it's not something that you know, that something magical happened. But I know that without his mercy, it was not, it would not be possible. It would not be possible. And the, 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 uh, the um, process of doing that uh, opens me up so much. I mean, I, I, my realization of, of, of Krishna consciousness has expanded so much. Uh, otherwise it would not be possible. So um, this I want to share. Uh, I'm sharing it with, you know, with confidence uh, that he has actually blessed me. Otherwise it was not possible. And that blessing is not, is, 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 I can say with, with my own testament that uh, it has helped me in many ways. Uh, in some, even though I, I, I'm not good at speaking, I'm not good at uh, writing, or I'm not good at language at all, zero, uh, still, uh, Guru Dave have shown giving me this blessing, so merciful to me that actually I can't repay. And I was saying before, earlier before, I think uh, uh, I was saying to, to Rasa Bihari at that time, uh, yesterday, that trill, uh, you know, about trillion air, trillion air, trillion air. Trillion air means, hang on, I, my power is getting very slow. Trillion M means in Indian, you, you call it crow. A crow means 10 million. One lakh of, <laughs> of, of one, one lakh of crow uh, is what a trillion is. And I'm talking about dollar, not, 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 not rupees, by the way. 
I say to them that in this world, at this moment, at the present moment, and you can have millions and billionaires. There's not a single trillionaire in the entire world right now in this planet. And I consider Bhakti Balav Maharaj is more than a trillionaire in terms, I'm, I'm, I don't mean in dollar and cents, but in terms of his, how great he is. Uh, so this is how I treat Balav Maharaj. He's such a great person. He is not an ordinary person at all. Uh, that's why I'm saying this uh, hush, uh, this uh, verse, Shakshak the richer, Samasta Sashre, Utasta, Bhavata Eva Sabe, Kintu Praboya, Priva Eva Sasya, one day Gorosi, Gorosi Charana window. He recites his words every time before he actually speaks, as I give a lecture, I give a talk. So uh, with that, uh, we should feel that way. Uh, Sila Gurudev actually in many ways is greater than Lord Krishna himself because he blessed me so much. Lord Krishna come, come to me directly because I'm so, so low down. But Bhakti Balvati Maharaj have shown me mercy. Hare Krishna. So Jai. Jai Balvati Maharaj. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Vidyapati Prabhu, for blessing us with this beautiful sata. We're all so happy to have you here with us. You are the most senior devotee here in our little satsang, and we have spent so much time and quality experience with you, Guru Maharaj. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. And, uh, yeah, please join us again. <clears throat> all other devotees who are still here in the Zoom meeting. Also, if anybody else wants to say something, you can mute yourself now. Yeah, no. Yes. OK, Prabhuji, I will leave now because I got work tomorrow. I have to get up really early. Okay. So please forgive me, Didi. I'll listen on YouTube everything now. Okay. 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 Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I, I want to say just very short. Yes. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. Oh, my God. I want to say just very short. I just wanted to say, um, I um I am thank you to Mira Didi they arrange the the class with the uh you Prabhu Radamada Prabhu and uh, that because I and also uh, now Vidyapati Prabhu he shared his realization so I just pray that the Shivara Bhaktirta Maharaj can show her mercy to uh, to me and to all of us. I just, I didn't know much uh, about Shira Bhattirta Maharaj, but I always wanted to know. So uh, Krishna fulfilled my desires. Just today, Bhakti, Siddhanta, Bhakti Vedanta Siddhanti Maharaj, he have uh, his offering, uh, offering Pushpanjali of uh, Shira Bhakti Vedanta, uh, Shira Bhakti uh, Bhattirta Maharaj, and he say one short story that he said that uh, there was the, in, Gurudev and the Brahmacharis, they were in the mat and there was a, an earthquake. And then the, the, all the Brahmacharis, they went out of the mat because they, was, they, they were um, feeling the, their own life, they were, they were risk. So uh, the, the earthquake was only uh, not very short. So when they finished the, earth, the earthquake, they went back to the mat and they was looking for Shira back Tirta Maharaj, and I didn't find him. And then uh, they looked for uh, all the rooms and they didn't find him. And then they went to the Diti rooms and they found the Shila Bharava Tirta Maharaj that he was embracing the Ditis. He was just em embracing the Ditis. So uh, Bhakti Siddhanta 
Bhakti uh, Siddhanti Maharaj say that the, we are, uh, the Brahmaji, in the case also, we are very attached to our bodies. And when it's favorable, favorable situation, it's very, it's, it's very nice to say we love Radha Krishna, but when it comes difficult situation, we can uh, see where we put our love. Because Guru Dev was embracing the deities. He was there. That's it. It was very inspired to me, these things. Thank you, Didi. Very beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For sharing with us, wonderful. Anyone else? Good. So I'm happy today that we had more chances to glorify Guru Maharaj. Yesterday was a beautiful day of remembering and glorifying, and today we continued. So let us continue this in our hearts all the time and keep on going deeper in this remembrance and also particularly in relation to Vrindavan and Prajapati. Try to go deeper in this beautiful relationship with Guru Maharaj and our Guru Vargas and remember them in this very deep affection way that we have learned from Guru Vargas. Thank you all, dear devotees, for joining us today. And please come again. I'm looking forward to having your association again soon. Hare Krishna, Vanta Kalpa, Taru Jasta, Kupat. Hare Krishna. Pavanidyo, Vaishnavidyo, Namo Namo. Hare Krishna, Vanta Kalpa, Taru Jasta, Kupat. 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 H